People from all walks of life strive to get their big break within the corridors of Hollywood's main streets and agencies. Kids beg their parents to up and travel miles across the country in order to fulfill their dreams of acting in their favorite sitcoms or films. But for some, the idea of fame is predestined. For model and actress Brooke Shields, her rise to superstardom seemed to flock to her and not vice versa. Getting her big break at just 11 months old, starring in an ivory soap ad. Brooke knew since she was just an infant that her road to model heights was meant to be. Of course, it's that her mom turned manager, Terry Shields, made sure her baby, using her own connections from her socialite days, would become a force to be reckoned with. Brooke would climb the acting and model social ladder with her mom's coaching, aiding her every step of the way, with co-founder of Ford, modeling agency, Eileen Ford, guiding Brooke throughout the industry. Taking on minor modeling gigs here and there, it wouldn't be till the year 1975 when Brooke would cause a major uproar at just age 10 when she posed nude for Playboy's imprint magazine, Sugar and Spice. If wearing a full face of makeup while glistening in a bathtub for an adult magazine wasn't alarming enough, playing an 11-year-old child prostitute in Louis Malley's adaption of the controversial book-turned-film Pretty Baby just may have you clutching your invisible pearls. Her mature role as Emmeline Lestrange in The Blue Lagoon would also leave critics with their eyebrows regs and their legs crossed given the nature of the film. A storyline in which two cousins become stranded on an island and end up having a baby with numerous nude scenes, filmed all while Brooke was only 14. These incidents on top of her already controversial Calvin Klein ad, although high-key concerning, propelled Shield's career from pretty baby to Hollywood it girl. Knowing what we know today, people always point towards Brooke, mom manager. Terry as the sole source behind the madness that was Brooke's exploitive roles in her childhood. But maybe there's more to it than what we all may think. Let's peep inside the madness of one of Hollywood's most exploited child stars. In case you didn't know, Brooke Shields, although underrated to some, was one of the most recognizable faces in Hollywood at the peak of her career in the 80s and 90s. Coming from a string of Italian royals, she captivated the attention of millions when she starred in several ads for Calvin Klein jean commercials at age 14. Her most notable and most controversial being the ad where she states, You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Many seeming to think that the ad was covertly sexual in nature, but Shields insists that it was all innocent fun. Take that as you will, but before the ad, that started it all, Brooke was barely a week old before her mother Terry looked at her baby girl and exclaimed that she was one of the most beautiful childs in the world. Right then and there, she knew Brooke was destined for show business and did everything in her power to break Brooke into the industry. After starring in a soap commercial, Terry decided that she'd become Brooke's mom manager, and it was only up from there. Brooke remained a child model, working under Eileen Ford of Ford Modeling Agency. It wouldn't be till 1975 that Terry made the highly controversial decision to allow her 10-year-old daughter to pose completely bareback for Sugar and Spice, an imprint publication of Hugh Hefner's Playboy magazine. In full glam makeup, accompanied by a choker and what looks like a body oil, the photos consist of Brooke posing seductively in and outside of a bathtub. Regardless of the intentions of the shoot, like you'd expect, once the racy images were published, they caused major backlash across the country, with people scratching their heads wondering how exactly the photo shoot was ever given the green light. According to New York laws, in order for a minor to pose for such publications, a legal guardian would have to sign off on the rights to the photos. With her mom manager being Brooke's legal guardian, that meant that she was the one to sign the rights away to the photographer of the shoot, Gary Gross. The disturbing shoot was first of many for Brooke. Given the notoriety she had received from the magazine spread, she'd get the opportunity to star in a movie at age 11. The subject matter, about a 12-year-old Violet, who resides in a brothel being optioned off to the highest bidder, is more controversial than the shoot itself. Hey, how do we know she is a virgin? The film involves multiple nude scenes, and Brooke herself wasn't allowed to see the film until she was of legal age. Following her Playboy print photo shoot, Pretty Baby ended up being banned in places like Canada, and the topic of child exploitation was brought up once again, understandably so. Two years after the controversial film, 14-year-old Brooke would star in another controversial film titled The Blue Lagoon, directed by Grease director Randall Kleiser, alongside a then 19-year-old Christopher Atkins. For those of you who don't know, Blue Lagoon is about two teens who get stranded on a South Pacific island after being shipwrecked and are left to survive on their own. 
the semi-bizarre coming-of-age film have the two leads, Brooke and Christopher, discover sex and ultimately end up having relations with each other, resulting in an island-made baby. Seems innocent enough until you realize that the two lead characters are in fact meant to be cousins. Similar to the likes of her previous role, several nude scenes were shot for the film, but to get over any laws forbidding minors from taking part in explicit scenes, the set's 32-year-old stunt woman, Kathy Trout, was used as Brooke's body double for when the nude scenes would occur. If two cousins falling in love wasn't strange in itself, Brooke later on revealed that the film's director insisted on the two falling in love in real life. Christopher Atkins explained that the director, Randall, would place photos of Brooke in his on-set bunker almost daily. But it all backfired because offset, Brooke and Christopher didn't like each other very much. Could be resentment from having adults pressure you into dating your 19-year-old co-star, perhaps? Whatever the case may be, Brooke insists that she remained covered at all times and that she had a great time and would even coach the director into finding the best lighting and angles for the scenes. Brooke went on to star in many TV shows and movies, including The Muppets, Endless Love, Friends, That 70s Show, Law & Order, and much, much more. With her daughter's career steady on the rise, the recent Sugar & Spice magazine spread, you know, the one signed off on, came back to haunt her. Reports say that Brooke only got paid $450 for the shoot, but Terry was now suing the photographer for a million dollars, claiming that Gross was selling blown up images of the photos, something they had not agreed to contractually. The New York Supreme Court ruled against Terry's favor and went as far as to say the pics weren't erotic and that the only those with a perverse mind would seem to think so. I guess the judge decided to hold his gavel against Terry's neck because not only did he stop there, but he decided to read her for filth, stating that Brooke's mom was trying to live vicariously through Brooke and even brought up Brooke's work in Blue Lagoon and Pretty Baby, claiming that Terry was trying to engender an image that is sexually provocative and exciting, all whilst trying to preserve Brooke's innocence. Needless to say, Terry and Brooke did not win the lawsuit, and those photos of a young Shields are still out there. By the age of just 16, Brooke had become a huge staple within Hollywood. Her ethereal natural beauty, combined with her soft-spoken voice, made her a concrete figure, and she'd got the attention of agencies from all over wanting to work with her. Her mother Terry, on the other hand, had dealt with a swarm of criticism with people labeling her as a bad mother. Nevertheless, the older Brooke became the more she insisted and her mom being the best mother she could have asked for. In between roles, Brooke accompanied by her mom would be escorted to nightclubs like New York's notorious Studio 54. Brooke often said that her mom made sure she was protected at all times. She'd go have a great time and leave escorted by her mom, yet again to make sure she always got home safe. The role of Brooke's mom's involvement in her life has been a topic of concern throughout Brooke's career. The insults and labels have stamped on her mom are anything but glorious, and from the looks of the role she'd sign off for her daughter to take before she was old enough to know better, you'd see why. Brooke doesn't seem to agree with the critics of her mom. She often describes their relationships as very close and very pervasive. In her 2014 memoir, There She Was a Little Girl, the real story of my mother and me, described her mother as being her rock, often saying that her mom made sure she had the manners when interacting with others and kept her grounded. Despite their bond, Brooke revealed on the Queen Latifah show that Terry was an alcoholic and would tell a petite Brooke to move her fat behind, which altered Brooke's perception of herself for a long time, that she structured an intervention for her mom when she was just 13, going on to say that Terry looked her in the eyes and said that she'll go along with it only for Brooke. All in all, Brooke says that her mom did what she thought was necessary at the time, and she doesn't regret her roles in those controversial films whatsoever, because at the end of the day, it was all only acting, and she left those roles unscathed, claiming that she's never had a Me Too moment. There's never been a time when I've said I just wanted to be a kid, because all along, I have been just a kid. I just loved the approval, and I loved working, and I loved being on set. We had fun, we traveled everywhere. So it wasn't as if I felt the responsibility as much as, oh my god, we have to get in the car, oh we bought a house, we bought another house. Like if I do this, we get this. That's the way it went for decades. As long as I was happy, we kept doing it. I never did something I didn't want to do. The roles she had taken on in childhood were alarming for any parent, but for Brooke and her mom, these roles meant instant success that catapulted the now mom of two into the headstrong woman she is today. What do you think about Brooke's childhood woes? Let us know what you think in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more True Celebrity Stories.